<laughs> it's Oscar season, Mason. Uh, it's that time of year where we have to endure endless <laughs> speculation and outrage and nominations mm. relating to the best. I know. I was going to say and worst films of the year. It's mostly best, but there's some bad ones that sneak in there, isn't there, Mason? Uh, from time to time, there is. Yeah. Because I want to talk about today Oscar snubs, eight Oscar snubs in particular for some best of which picture. that have outraged you, Mason. You were watching me get this list together, and you every once I'm in a while just... you would just you would shake your head and you would literally go, "No, oh, that's outrageous." <laughs> so I think I've got a pretty comprehensive list here. Obviously, all awards are subjective, and at the same time, awards don't matter. They don't mean anything. Because Except for the award we won. Yes, obviously. Mm-hmm. The only thing that really matters is how you feel about yourself and how much money you have. That's all the <laughs> two most important things. Now, this I is... would say also if you have a Ferrari, but that is included in how much money you have. I Correct. Think. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think you can't just have a Ferrari. No, that'd be weird. Like if you if you had a Ferrari and no house or something yeah. and you lived in your Ferrari, that would You've be... you made some poor decisions. Made some decisions. I mean, that'd be pretty rock and roll, but you know. Uh, so Forrest Gump, the year that came out, uh, a lot of people have kind of soured on Forrest Gump over the years because, you know, it's saccharin and it's rewriting history. And it's about this idiot stumbling his way <laughs> through time, winning uh-huh. awards and meeting the president. But isn't that all of us in a way? Yeah. Just an idiot wandering around meeting the president? I don't think it's a terrible movie by any stretch, but then you look at that same year we had both Shawshank Redemption and Pulp Fiction. Sure. Shank Redemption, both of them, and Pulp Fiction, a lot of people consider those their favourite movies of all time. Correct. A lot of people consider Forrest Gump their favourite movie of all time. But which is it for you? Of the three, I have to pick my favourite movie yes. of all time, Pulp Fiction. Well, Pulp Fiction... I mean, just look at the poster on my wall. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's actually my wall, but you bring that poster I bring the poster week. and I insist every week. Yeah, because yeah. I think uh-huh. Pulp Fiction... I mean, I like Shawshank, Shawshank a lot. It's a great yeah. movie, but Pulp Fiction, the the unconventional way that they're told a narrative, you know, and weaving, weaving in all those different stories together where it never feels... You never get lost and never feels forced. A lot mm. of movies have tried to replicate that since. Oh, for sure. And some have succeeded and some have not, but... Pulp Fiction's an amazing film and continues to be. And a lot of that is obviously down to the editing and, and mm. the writing. It's not It's not just a direct directorial effort, Mason. Yeah. And Tim Robbins gets mm. covered in mud in Shawshank. That's right. So that's pretty incredible as well. It's mud and poop, I It's think. mud and poop, yeah. Yes, okay. that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, look, I, don't say, I wouldn't say that's outrageous, uh-huh. but in hindsight, yeah, not, not the best decision. Or uh-huh. the best decision, if you think that is the best decision. <laughs> Correct, yes. Next up, we have uh, the year that Fargo came out. Uh huh. Sure. We had the English Patient. Does anybody remember that? Is I don't know whether I've seen. Is it, it Rafe Fines have. in it's it? It's Rafe Fines, and maybe he's a pilot that gets scarred. I don't know whether I've seen it. Have you seen it? No. Anyway, whether I have or have not seen it, it's not as good as Fargo. But it won the Oscar for best. Won picture. the Oscar for best picture. Interesting. Yeah. Now, was that one of the first times you said that's outrageous? I don't think so. Okay, it wasn't right. my most outrageous. Okay, thing. but give us a bit of warning in advance if you found if you saw something <laughs> okay. that was outrageous. No problem. But yeah, you're right. I feel like. I mean, Fargo's legacy has endured. It's now a really good TV show. Yes. I mean, that doesn't mean that, well, it should have won an Oscar because it's a good TV show now. Well, how about this? An English patient TV series where a pilot keeps getting wounded constantly (laughs) and every week he has to come back. There's a cold open. He gets horrifically injured in some different way. Maybe not even related to being a fighter pilot. Okay. Just he falls into a rake or something. Hit by a series of cars. Hit by a series of cars and he has to come back and the the nurse is like, oh... The English patient. <laughs> and then Tell you what, ch- I'm bloody running out of patience, she yeah, says. Yeah, ch- you've changed your tune now, haven't you? Yeah. No. But anyway. No. <laughs> you're right. That's, but I think, that's not a good I idea. I think you're right that I can't... The English patient doesn't have that level of cultural re- relevance. Or yeah. it doesn't It doesn't have that, that impact that, that Fargo had. And but, Fargo's funny. Fargo is funny. Yeah. Uh, in the 1960s, Mason, Ooh. would you believe it that Psycho was not even nominated for a Best Picture? <gasps> yeah. Would you say... That's outrageous. I would say it's outrageous because I think that's indicative of the way that horror movies are treated in general uh-huh. for the best yeah, picture. Right. Uh-huh. I mean, they'll, they'll get like, a, they might get a best writer and best score and whatever for John Carpenter's and, uh-huh. and whatever. Even performances like Tony Collette is apparently amazing in Hereditary. I haven't seen it. And that movie is apparently amazing. I haven't seen it. <laughs> like that should probably be nominated you know, this year. For sure, right. So I just think that the fact that Psycho, which has set the, the standard for so many horror films and has been parried, count, parodied countless times and still holds up as a film in itself, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, to at least get a nod. I mean, it's yeah. outrageous. Is yeah, what it I'm is saying. outrageous. Yeah. yeah, and Vince Vaughn was great in it. He was really good. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And Haish. And Haish was killing it. Yeah. And was killed. Was killed, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Underrated gem. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got look, this is a very old film, but it's worth bringing it up because if I don't, it will be brought up. Uh, Citizen Kane. For sure, right. Lost to How Green Was My Valley. So it was nominated. Yes. What is the plot of How Green Was My Valley? Who knows? Mm hmm. 
It's a guy painting a valley. Great enough, he says. How great is it? Is it great enough? And then he does that classic bit of old-timey acting where he's just stoic for a while. And then he's like, I tried to make it as green as I could. <laughs> but Citizen Kane is the Citizen Kane of films. Correct, yes. You know what I mean? The same way yeah. that they say that their boy strikes back is the whatever of mm-hmm. the, the, the middle thing. It's, it's Citizen Kane. How does yeah. it not win Best Picture? But look, obviously mm. for a lot of these, hindsight is twenty twenty, And you- many years have passed since then. And so we can both say... What was How Green Was My Valley about? All I know about it is there is a Spider-Man uh, Green Goblin storyline from I, I think probably the 60s or 70s called How Green Was My Goblin. And how green was it? Pretty green. Great. Pretty green, yeah. let me tell you. Next up we've got, uh, this. now this is outrageous. Oh no. Brokeback Mountain mm-hmm. lost to Crash. Yeah. Crash is terrible. I agree. And not just like, well, it was should have been in there. it shouldn't have been in there. And Brokeback Mountain is outstanding. Agreed. Amazing lead performances. Obviously Heath Ledger, you know, is probably more fondly remembered because he has since passed and he went on to do the Joker. But Jake Gyllenhaal is equally good in that movie. Mm-hmm. There's probably some questionable old man makeup at some point in the movie. <laughs> yeah, right. uh-huh. I can't really remember. But it's a heartbreaking story. And it's beautifully told. And it also told a narrative that hadn't really been told before. Agreed, yeah. And Crash is shit. But it's got a lot of celebrities in it. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It was the pulp fiction of its day. Correct, yes. Except it's crap. Mm-hmm. Have you seen Brokeback Mountain? Yes. It's a great film. Yeah. That's outrageous what I'm saying. That's outrageous. This one is equally outrageous, if not more so. I'm getting more outrageous. Uh-huh. But then I'll probably get less outrageous. Uh-huh. This might be peak outrage. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Shakespeare and Love beat out both... Saving Private Ryan and The Thin Red Line. Incredible. Yeah. That was the year when World War II was big. People were loving it. It was back in a big way. Do you think maybe Thin Red Line and Saving Private Ryan split the vote? They may have. Yeah. I saw The Thin Red Line when it came out and I didn't like it. I was a kid because I'd seen Saving Private Ryan and that's more bang, crash, shoot. Yeah, right. Nazis, uh fun. Not fun. You know what I mean? (laughs) Wow. (laughs) It's more of an action movie is what Mm, I'm saying. Yeah. But it's not just that. It's it's obviously beyond that. And Thin Red Line is more of a introspective story of hey don't fight wars and maybe i want to hide in the jungle i'm jim caviezel yeah but shakespeare in love yeah was what if shakespeare was in love (laughs) so that's good too isn't it Mm -hmm. and maybe ben affleck cameos in it briefly really makes you think doesn't it it doesn't it's not a good film or it's a fine film i don't really remember Uh but i'll tell you this much it's not as good as saving private ryan or thin red line do you think maybe ben affleck and matt damon split the vote they could have Mm -hmm. best friends torn apart that's right yeah they didn't win the best friends oscar that year did they (laughs) no they certainly they didn't mm-hmm. yeah do you have a preference between saving private ryan or thin red line uh i think saving private ryan is more rewatchable it moves at a clip yeah i think i've seen it yeah. many more times yeah mm. i think red line just the once yeah so uh dances with wolves which is about kevin costner being the best native american mm-hmm, who's agreed. ever existed yes uh beat goodfellas goodfellas is like the standard of mobster, mobster movies yeah i uh-huh. mean you know so is uh-huh. the godfather etc yeah. this is less outrageous you think? I think so, yeah. Dances with Wolves goes forever. That's what people like. I remember when they showed Value it. Value for money. <laughs> yes. They showed it on TV when I was a kid and they split it over two nights. I remember that, yeah. Yeah. Because there was so much Costner. <laughs> and so much advertising to they, put in. And this was also the era where Kevin Costner was riding high. His hair was thick and full and, lush mm, and luxurious. Yes. And then they were just giving him money to make whatever. Because mm. he, he did Field of Dreams, he did this, and then he did Waterworld, Waterworld and then The Postman. Which sure. didn't... I don't think they won the years that they were nominated for Best Picture. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, but, so you don't think this is that outrageous? I don't remember that... I don't remember... You're uh, not going to pop on Dances with Wolves, I'm absolutely though. not. But I think at the time, it wasn't a horrific film, was it? I don't know. It was just a good film, wasn't it? Is it a good film? I don't know. See, that's the thing. <laughs> it's been so long since I've seen any of it. You know, is it hugely problematic now? Is it very probo now? Yeah. Should Kevin Costner be cancelled? We just don't know. We just don't know. Mm. Well, luckily, he was killed in the DC films and he won't be returning. Okay, cool. Except nice. in a flashback where he's... Building a river on a mountain or something. Very nice. Remember that bit? Yeah, I remember it. It was a good movie in oh, whatever yeah. movie that was in. Oh, yeah. Oliver yes. beat out 2001 A Space Odyssey for Best Picture. I mean, Oliver's just... Oliver's fine. Oliver, yeah. Oliver, never before has I bought it more. If it's that version of the Oliver, which it may be. <laughs> I don't know. Is Oliver always a musical? I don't think it is. I don't know. But look, Oliver, if it's the one I'm thinking of, is probably a good film. But 2001 Space Odyssey literally changed everything. Literally everything. Okay. Literally changed some aspects of filmmaking. There we go. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it set the the time for like Star Wars Uh and various... Like, it's the the benchmark of sci-fi. Has Kubrick won a lot of 
Oscars or is he one of those guys who famously got snubbed forever? Matt, please put in how many Oscars Thank Kubrick you. has won for Best Picture on mm-hmm. the screen. Yep. Thank, Thank you, you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. But I think sci-fi films yes. like fantasy and like uh-huh. horror are often snubbed for Best Picture. Mm. Star Wars didn't win. It probably should have won. That also changed some aspects of filmmaking. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Inception mm-hmm. could arguably should have won the year that it did, but maybe another film won. Was probably still Anom- Another film book. definitely Who did knows? win, yes. Mm-hmm. The movie Sunshine is maybe the best movie ever made. I don't think that's true. And it was not nominated for Best Picture. You know what? What you're saying is outrageous. <laughs> it's absolutely outrageous. But that's eight films that should have been nominated. But eight some films! Some were nominated. I some were nominated, but they didn't win. Yeah, but some, some weren't nominated, though. Some and weren't even nominated. Do you think it matters whether a film gets Oscar glory? Do people even remember? I mean, what film won in 19... 19- 37. I think the nominations are more important at the time, mm. probably than the win, because I think that encourages people to go, okay, here's, here's a half a dozen movies that people think are really good and I should check them out now, yeah. especially when they're still in cinemas. Yes. How but, long do you think you can look back on a, on a film for and go, that should have been nominated? Is it like a is it like year by year or is it 10 years ago you go, oh, crash, what? But do you know what I mean? Like how much hindsight needs to be oh, okay. um, in play? Oh, that's a good question. Mm. How do you feel? And then I'll... Slightly change your answer and repeat it back to you. Okay. I don't feel anything. You feel nothing <laughs> yes. about it. The- then why'd have- you ask the question? <laughs> were you trying to, were you trying, oh my God, you were trying to reflect off my opinion. <laughs> well, this is embarrassing. No. I okay. What I honestly think is films stand the test of time that are great despite whether or not they win anything. Right. Uh-huh. I mean, nobody knows if Star Wars won or didn't win. I didn't know before I looked this list up because uh-huh. I don't care. Great films stand on their own. And at the end of the day, everything's forgotten anyway and it doesn't matter. Mm. But Go remember on. that time Shakespeare fell in love? Yeah. Or did he? He did. He did, didn't he? I can't remember. Anyway, fuck him and that movie. <laughs> wow. That's-, That's a bold <laughs> stance. It's very bold. <laughs> This has been a video. We do videos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. We also have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows uh, every Monday uh, where we talk like the news of the week and then a topic. Mm-hmm. Swing on by. There's one linked below. Where well, we talk about all sorts of stuff. That's right. Recently, you better believe it. You better believe it. Recently did one about the most anticipated movies of this year. Mm-hmm. The year of our law 2019. Correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, my kid is in the background doing a bit of yelling. And that's Great. okay. <laughs> That's important to me that this bee's in the video. It is this bee's in the video. Correct. Oh my God, this bee's in the video. <laughs> Matt, add it in. Add a bee in. Anyway, guys, we'll see you next week. Grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.